So I have started kind of grouping these videos together so that they make a little more sense. Um, we're working on so many things at the same time that just doing what we're doing each day would not be very cohesive. So I'm trying to put together videos that'll make sense for you and get them out, um, but they aren't necessarily the exact order that they happened in. It's quite a mix. What I'm making now is my co-pilot's seat. So first I made a cardboard template, which is behind this T-square thing. And I thought I would need a cutout on the door side, but I didn't. But this cutout worked perfectly to go around the console. So that is what I'm gonna try first, leaving the right side square. So the plan is um, I'm going to run a piece of plywood across the seat and it will actually rest on this ledge as well. Well, pretty simple concept so far. It sits like this. This is a cutout. Can't slide forward because it'll hit the console. Can't slide backwards because it's seated really nicely against the chair. The next things to figure out are, I want to put something to maybe go in this gap um, and then uh, maybe like a little cushion. And then the dog bed itself will be a cushion on top but I don't want it sliding. So I've got to figure that part out too. Okay, I sewed a little pillow part that will go down into the deep part of the seat to just keep it more firm. And now I have these carpet squares. I need to fix this one because it's hanging over the edge. And I'm going to um, put them on the top. They're adhesive. And then I will um, also staple those down so they don't go anywhere. And that will help it be grippy for the dog bed. And then I will test it out. There's what it looks like with the carpet on it. All right, let's see if I can do this with mostly one hand. So it goes in to there, it sets on the seat, and it's stopped right here so it can't slide forward, can't slide backwards. It's really firm. Anyway, should be safe and I have storage underneath, a lot of storage. These seats are ridiculously high. I know everybody said that, but it's just crazy. It's too high for you to see very well because it puts your head up in the roof. And um, yeah, it'd be nice if they weren't so high. You ready to go on an adventure, Frodo? You ready to go? Yeah? For my next trick, I will be turning these into steps. They are, in fact, steps but I'll be attaching them. So that's cool. Just gonna open up the directions. And a lot of people said it was pretty easy to figure out. Let's see if I can do it. I should have done an unboxing of this because these were packaged super, super well. They have these on all the ends. Um, it's got all of the directions in here. They look pretty easy. Parts list, all the hardware's packed really well. It's packs of it. like. This is going under your vehicle, but it's packed so that it wouldn't scratch up. That little guy is going by the driver's door. And then this assembly is going to be all one piece going from the passenger door past the slider. Um, it's six inches, so it should be, and it's grippy. And it seems like it's really well made. This is by iBoard. So um, once I get it on, I'll let you know what I think. This is, I'm excited. This is cool too. They've got the hardware for different steps packaged really clearly with different um, letter designation. The first step was to assemble the passenger side running board, even though we are not starting out with that installation.
two small things so far. We got an extra lock washer, but we were short one flat washer um, for the, um, the bolts there. And then these are plastic, which is fine because they are just kind of holding this on. But like this one went in perfectly, but this one isn't going down any farther. And like one extra turn and you can see what happens on a plastic screw, it just rips the hell out of it. So this was user error for these plastic screws. I had started out using too sharp of a Phillips head screwdriver. I needed a much more blunt one to avoid messing up those screws. I'm starting to put the driver's side running board on and it shows it going in the second hole, but if you look at where the door is, if that's the front edge of it, um, I'll be missing it. Welcome to the undercarriage of my van. So there are two holes here. You can see that one has a plug in it. And this one I attached it to, but I think, I really think it needs to go in that one. I'm not sure if the bracket will fit though, because that's right up against this metal piece. Uh, maybe the um, running board sticks over a bit. I'll give it a chance and follow the directions and I'll be really pissed off if I have to do it over again. All right, let's see if I can show this. So this is the hole for the support structure. We pull the plug out of it. Urgh. Oh, put and you get a dirt face full of dirt. That's always a load of fun. Oh, so then I put in this little guy. Hmm, yummy dirt right off the road. And then a big washer. This is what I did on the front. And then a locking washer. Oh, gravity works. This is so fun. Okay. And then a lock washer. And it says don't tighten them all the way, so I'm just going to get it on here enough so it's not flopping around. Finger tight, I think, is not really tight, so I'm going to make it finger tight. <laughs> and then this, ow, this little puppy is going to go up here on the other side of this pinch weld, which I had no idea there was any such thing until 10 minutes ago. And then we'll drill a hole and that will go on this side. So we'll have, we'll have this attached and this attached and then the step will go on top. Not sure if this angle will show very well. Um, so I have my doubts because it says not to tighten the hardware, but now it says, so I install these little sliders. You see that? They slide around in there. And then these carriage bolts go through those um, brackets. Before you tighten it, before you drill holes, drilling a hole is the next step. They want you to put this part on. So I do have doubts, but here we go. holes. Seems like there could be a better way. Okay. Are they in all the holes? Let's find out. Nope. This slider is escaping. Great. Now I just need to put the washers on. 
Not a lot of space here to work with. Okay, so these little brackets are gonna go on the pinch weld. Made a mark there, and then I made a mark over here, which is much harder to see because it's dirty. So they say to try to avoid the actual weld and also um, to get it up as far as possible um, away from the bottom edge, which makes sense. So that is what I'm gonna do now is drill my two holes. Most of the drilling footage was unsalvageable due to four letter words, but eventually I did get through this pinch weld and got my holes drilled. There is a hole. I just can't get over all these holes I keep putting in my van. There's the other hole and I'm ready to tighten everything. I don't know how well it'll show when I'm working on it, but this little piece goes up over the hole and then I've got various nuts and bolts and things. <laughs> this is what it looks like. It actually looks kind of crooked, but um, the van sits with the front end down a little and the contour of the front goes down also, plus it goes out in the front. So it part of it is an optical illusion and part of it is yeah i think it might be slightly crooked but we got it on as straight as we could but yeah most of this is an optical illusion and it's really it's really good and it works well i pulled it back a little which is kind of counterintuitive because i wanted to cover the, the step here and it does but you can see how far forward from the bracket that end is versus this end but if i pull it back further i mean for what <laughs> but it did help with that illusion and I was able to scoot this end in maybe a half inch so it looks a little a little straighter I think it looks a little less wonky next I would be installing the passenger side running board with four brackets I got the first one on three more to go I am back under the van and I'm going to put these brackets in here and here. I've got all my stuff assembled and uh, yeah, get this one on. Right, I've got all my brackets on there finger tight. I was surprised to find that the larger running board seemed to go on much easier than the small one, although it might have just been because I had that practice.